I'm John. I'm Evan. I'm Owen. And we're people in the daytime. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's from the Eric Andre show. Um, yeah. There's a skit where um, Hannibal is like, he's in a park. And, which Is it the safety stegosaurus? Uh, no, I think it's... Oh, the it's one, Can I Hold Your Baby? Yeah, he's trying to hold people's babies, and at the end he just gives up, and he's like, I don't even like talking to people in the daytime. I think he actually says during, but we amended it. So, but yeah, yeah, it's just Hannibal Burris going. I don't even like talking to people during the daytime, and so, yeah, that's it. Shout out to Eric Andre. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, how the band started was John was working on his own record, and he asked me and the bass player Anthony, who's not here today, to come play on it. Yeah, we just started jamming, and mm -hmm. that was that. And then next thing we know, we were doing like the rock off, and so we needed a drummer. Mm. And we had our old drummer, Gina. Shout out to Gina. She played with us and we did that and now yeah. we're still making music. That was like phase one. I think um, two albums that influenced me uh, really deeply were Drunk by Thundercat and then Awaken My Love by Childish Gambino kind of set me on the path to just you know learning everything that I now know <laughs> um, I love those albums so much I would listen to them constantly so uh okay this is a tough one because there's you know I think we all have pretty like eclectic tastes and it like jumps around constantly but the first one that comes to mind is uh, The Mothership Connection by Parliament Funkadelic. And we're all crazy about that record, so. Yeah. But uh, let's see, besides that, let's see, probably Prince, really like any Prince record, probably uh, I want to say I'll go with 1999 because yeah. I felt like that's like this perfect culmination of like funky guitar. I think he's like one of the best like rhythm guitar players that there ever was. So that's like a big guitar idol for me. You stole both my answers, <laughs> <laughs> except I was going to use uh, Prince's self-titled. Oh, um, classic too. Oh yeah, yeah. amazing. I mean, a lot of Funkadelic albums, too. I mean, I think we have a few, like, quotes of some of their stuff in the, in the record a couple yeah. times. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I should say Gorillaz, too. They got me into synthesizers and stuff. I was into Gorillaz, like, all my life. So, yeah. Yeah. It. I mean, it jumps all around. Uh, it con yeah, it's just like constantly changing. Right now I'm really into Grover Washington. And yeah. so like, that's like what I'm into, but I'll be into something new next week. Yeah, we're really just scratching the surface mm -hmm. <laughs> of like everything we listen to. I was big into Conan Moccasin. Oh yeah, right. Conan, okay. I should have said <laughs> Conan Moccasin. Uh, Caramel, like just his sexy, like guitar sound is like unmatched, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh huge influence when it comes to guitar. Yeah. Well, uh, so for that song, that song has like a whole origin story, which we could get into, but to just like run through it real quickly, like I wrote the lyrics for that song. And although it is humorous and we have a, like Anthony who's not here today is like probably the, uh, the focal point of humor in the group but uh i don't know i wrote those lyrics kind of with almost a serious intention but it comes off uh kind of like i don't know sort of funny I, I really can't explain it i just was inspired to write a song about a guy whose girlfriend leaves him for a tv <laughs> yeah Something about playing it completely straight, I think, lends to its humor. <laughs> yeah. And also, I think we all just love cartoons. 
Mm -hmm. um, and like, I don't know. So when you love that so much, it's gonna end up in your music. Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, so how that one started was I had come up with the idea for the song. I went on a run one day and the, I don't know, I just, back in high school, I used to go for runs a lot and like just come up with things on the run. And then I would run back really fast because I was like, I gotta, you know, start putting this down. Or I would even like sometimes get ideas and call John like while I was running out and I'd be like, John, this yeah. is like what we gotta <laughs> gotta do now. But I got an idea for that song and started writing the lyrics and I, I was putting it to this other like piece of music I was working on at the time. And it was fine, but it was never really working. And then kind of went to the wayside a little bit. And then one day- One day, <laughs> uh, I woke up randomly. I rolled out of bed with like this groove in my mind and I just like sluggishly was like Ugh. Ugh. and I sat at my computer and like lazily recorded this just like random idea I had and then I sent it like we have this massive like Google Drive where we put all our demos just to share it and uh, Evan heard it and he put <laughs> like the original in love with the TV lyrics over it and yeah. it just kind of worked so in love with the TV was originally like it's a totally separate thing Mm -hmm. And the demo I put in, I thought would just kind of be like this idea that never became anything. You know, lo and behold. <laughs> yeah, they just merged together. Yeah. Just John's music, my words, and then eventually John would put his own words in there. And then, you know, that's the birth of a song for you, you know? Yeah, I think just... it took like one rehearsal to like get the final form of it down. And uh, we were like, slap a keyboard solo on the end. You know, do the chorus one more time. Yeah. It's fine. I have to say, though, uh, big shout out to this man right here because we originally had digital drums on it and we were like, oh, I don't know. Like, maybe we should just stay with these drums because they're so good. And then we started playing with Owen, who was a masterful drummer. And he just added that, like, without those drums, it wouldn't even be, like, nearing what it is. So. This guy right here, that's the sauce. Yeah. He is the sauce. The juice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that's pretty much it. We eat, fast food is kind of. Sadly. Sadly integral, because we just always get it. Yeah. For a while it was Chipotle, but then we kind of got strung out on it. Um, I don't know. Uh, we used to, uh, Back in the day, we used to go to Wendy's a lot with uh, Anthony. Um, there was a very iconic night where me, Evan, and Anthony went to Sheets uh, in Twinsburg and just got sandwiches. And um, Actually, it was a few nights. And we just listened to Donuts by Jay Dilla. And uh, I don't know, it was just always a great time. Yeah. Um, so those stick out as iconic. Uh, I'm vegetarian. <laughs> so it's hard to really eat fast food, especially at like 3 a.m. I could really only get fries. So if I'm hungry in the middle of the night, I usually just make oatmeal. You know, throw some nuts in there, coconut mm. flakes. Delicious. Oh, yeah. Mm. And nutritious. I think uh, if it was a late night order, just off the top of the head, sheets, probably uh, a sub pretzel bun, turkey, oil and vinegar, pepper jack cheese, lettuce. Banana peppers, pickles, hot peppers if they got them. Uh, yeah, toasted. It must be toasted. It's a very important oh, part. We always go to Barrio, like when it's late. Yeah. Super important. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. That's our fast food story. I feel like um, at first, you know, when, cause we're all in college, you know, there was that moment where we all went home from school and it was like country shutting down. This is the end of the world. And for a while we all like uh, quarantined in our own homes. 
And so me and John would like be like talking over the phone all the time and be like, we gotta, we gotta get working on this record because this rec record is like three years. I don't well, know, it's it, a long time coming. It's been a year officially in the making, but we've been writing the songs for a while. But yeah, so at first that was tough, but then me and John, uh, after a while, we were both quarantined for a while. We weren't really seeing anyone, so we deemed it okay between us to like have our sessions to start working together. And although it sucked not getting to play live, because that's like one of my favorite things in the world, it has really like forced us to focus on <laughs> finally making the record that everyone keeps like asking about. So I and I'm really excited to share it when it's done. Yeah. I gotta think about that. <laughs> well, my I, I had like a hand injury uh, right when like, right after this whole thing got started. So I couldn't like play drums or like video games or use like a TV or I, I had tendonitis all summer. And so on top of not being able to do what I do and there being nothing going on, you know, it, at first it gets kind of hard, but uh, I kind of found my peace by uh, just trying to get outside like as much as possible. I, I, I would go hiking like three or four days a week, mm. um, like all day, and that was really great. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. I think for me it was a pretty basic kind of quarantine situation. Uh, when it all first started, I got in the habit of working on some like solo music since we couldn't meet to record people in the daytime stuff. And that was actually really nice. It kind of kept me sane. Um, and, uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, but I don't know. Um, kept separate from everyone. Got cabin fever like everyone else, you know. Um, social media numbed my brain but I'm getting through it. <laughs> I think some good art came out from it. Yeah. Uh, which you'll hopefully hear eventually. Mm -hmm. See, Probably something going great. Maybe. That's a hard question because... That's the show I would go to. If I could go back in time and go to any show, it would be a Funkadelic show. Yeah, but... Uh anyone see that's a hard question because I, 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 I would like would feel wrong opening for like one of my inspirations almost <laughs> you know mm -hmm. like I feel like like I don't deserve to be on this stage like uh but just if I could like play with any band or like open for any band and watch their show it would probably be Prince, probably. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I would feel honored to open for any one of my influences, I guess. I, I think we all would. Yeah. Yeah, Prince, Thundercat, mm -hmm. I don't know, Funkadelic, uh, you know, all of it. <laughs> I, I feel like maybe I sort of like speak for the band when I say that uh, I mean, we get along pretty well in it, I think, but we've always sort of, uh, I don't know. We've just, it's, we felt like we haven't been able to categorize ourselves in it. You know, people always ask us our genre and maybe some people would say funk. I prefer to say pop because it's pop music, I think. You know, pop music is just music that anyone can enjoy. And that's what I think it is. I don't really, the scene is cool and I wish we were more a part of it, but you know, COVID, but I don't know. I don't know the scene that well either, so. Yeah, I mean, um, I don't know. I think we kind of bring more electro funk influence, but really we're just here to make people, you know, dance, have a good time. <laughs> I think that's our goal when we play a show. And uh, yeah, played with a lot of great bands. So. <laughs> what he said.
Yeah, well, working on a record. Uh, right, and live. That's yeah. that's all I'll say. We'll probably have a single coming out next month. Working on a music video, but uh, well, it's a slow process, you know. I think the whole album process has just been dealing with one problem after another, but <laughs> that's kind of like what any big creative endeavor kind of has to deal with, you know, just like making a movie or something. So excited to put it out when it's done. Yeah, that's for sure. Um. Spread love, stay happy. Do what makes you happy as long as it doesn't make other people unhappy. Uh, I was honored that you wanted to interview us. <laughs> um, I think it was great to be here. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks yeah. for having us.